Welcome to the first part of the Animate Bible Study series. I'm Reverend Justin Smith, and I'm grateful that you were able to join me along this journey for the next seven sessions. We're going to be starting with uh, the first part of the Animate series called Animate Bible. And in this part, we're going to be looking from the outside in at Scripture, how it came to be, and what it is we can do with it and live with the Scripture. As we begin today, though, I call your attention upon God. May we feel the presence of God wherever it is we are right now in this moment in our study, wherever it is that we are located while doing this study. And as we are online, we are still in connectivity with the Spirit around us. So hear these words from Isaiah 25, verse 1. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. May that be our feeling today that the plan is that we are going to be connected through this online study using the Sparkhouse Animate Faith, Animate Bible series together. I want you to think about a book that you have read. It could be any type of book maybe the number of books that you have read. How do you go about choosing a book to read? What's the process? How does it start? What's one of your favorite books or stories to read? What types of books are you most drawn to? Is it fiction or nonfiction? Is it classic or contemporary? Do you read to relax or do you read to learn? Think about these questions for a moment. How do you go about choosing a book? What's one of your favorite books or one of your favorite stories? And what types of books are you most drawn to and why? So in this moment, as you press pause, comment. Comment on these questions. What is it that you draws you into a piece of literature and why do you go there? When we're looking at the books that we like and are drawn to in the stories and the genres that, of literature that really pull us into learning and or being um, or just enjoying reading and maybe into fantasy world, if you will, these are the books that help define who it is we are in life. We read the books to better understand who it is that we are. And that's kind of what we're doing when we're looking at Scripture. When we talk about canon, we're talking about the collection, the finalized copy of the Christian Scriptures, what we use from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And within the canon, we create within ourselves a canon, a certain set of books that we go to in order to reference things from Scripture. There are certain books that maybe we don't read in the scripture, and maybe there's those books that we go to all the time, and so we set for ourselves a canon within a canon. Why is it that we use a certain translation over another translation? Is it because we understand it better, or is it because that it's been something that we've used for years on end, or something we grew up with? Why do we do these things? I want you to hear about Marcion. Bishop Marcion believed that the God of the Old Testament was not the same God of the New Testament. His thoughts on the scripture led him actually to being excommunicated from the church in 144 CE. His views pushed the church, however, because of his, because of his thoughts in God, on God, they have a different God in the Old Testament than there is in the New Testament. His views on this actually led the church to creating a canon, canonization of the Bible, selecting the scriptures that we have and will use as authoritative word of God in the Bible today. How were scriptures chosen? Well, we can look at how that is by a simple rubric, if you will. So I want you to look at this rubric on your screen. 
Here's a few questions that we can use. Who said it? Did they know Jesus? How good is it? How weird is it? This is the refining process, refining process that determined the books that formed our Christian Bible. So if we used this rubric today, would we still allow some of the books that are in our canonized scripture? Would we still allow some of those books in our Bible today? Would we read those today still? Or would we ask these questions and be like, eh, I don't think that so much needs to be there. Take a moment. And I want you to look at 1 Corinthians, a letter by Paul to the Corinthian church. And I want you to use this rubric. Maybe look at the intro in your Bible, if your Bible has one, to, the, to this scripture, to this book, this letter. And ask, look at the rubric. Who said it? Did they know Jesus? How good is it? How weird is it? Press pause and write your thoughts on, is this scripture fit the rubric to be in the canonized Bible? As we continue in our dialogue together about the canon and scripture, we're going to divulge into four parts, refining deeper this understanding. In this first part, I invite you to turn to 2 Timothy. Right now, scholars believe that this book was probably not written by Paul. I want you to read 2 Timothy. It's not that long. Does it change your mind? Does the authorship change your mind and your understanding and what these words may say to us today? In our second part, it's important to know the context of scriptures. It's important to know where, when, and why the writer chose to write and why the writer chose to write to who they may be writing to. So we always ask those questions when we look at letters or uh, when we're looking at history. We want to know the context. What's happening here? What happened in that moment for this, to be, for this to have been written and shared with a group of people? I invite you to skim Chronicles 5 and read the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 and ask these questions. Are these passages helpful in understanding the context? How do we become more aware of the context of a scripture? How do we know when something in the Bible is helpful? Should we ignore context in which the scripture was written? Take a moment and read these and comment your answers to these questions. In our third part, I invite you to go to the Old Testament book of Exodus and read chapter 4, verses 24 and 26, and think about these two questions. Is this passage helpful to you today? Is this beneficial in any way to you today? And is there anything meaningful to you in this passage? If not, or if so, share And finally, I invite you to look at chapter 4 of Exodus and think about these things, context as a whole, okay? So a moment ago, you read two verses. Now I invite you to read the entire chapter. Does reading the entire chapter help you understand this book and this chapter more than those two verses? And does reading the entire chapter help make the story less or possibly make the story more weird? Or does it make it more or less relevant? Take a moment and read chapter 4 and give your thoughts to those questions.
As we depart today, I want you to remember that you too have the power of the Holy Spirit to lead you in discerning Scripture's relevance in your life. You have the ability to gain an understanding of Scripture from many sources and from the guidance of God to refine you, like gold is refined over and over again, and refine the Scriptures to which we look to for guidance. So as we go forth this week, and as we'll come back again and discuss the next session of this study, I want you to think about this this week. Think about the way you weigh ideas and information. What do you take seriously? What do you ignore? And how do you make those decisions? Because every day that we do that, because we do, we're essentially living into a canon within a canon. As decisions had to be made through the guidance of the Holy Spirit to make the Bible what it is for us today, so too it is with our lives. And we make decisions and we ask questions about the context of certain situations. How do we take things seriously? What do we ignore? And how do we make that decision? We'll see you next week right here for Animate Bible, session number two.